afternoon and thank you for joining Hiding Behind the Lipstick 3.0 Ministries. I am your host, Minister Ophelia Waters, and I want to continue our series that we started a couple of weeks ago. I missed on last week, please forgive me, but I am back to finish talking with you about bullying as we uh, enter segment three of Saving the Children. We understand that we have a commitment to our children to make sure that they're safe and they're protected when they go to school. And we know that a lot of times that is the last thing that's happening. Um, we have children that are being shot up in classes and children that are losing their minds and they're pulling guns and they're shooting, they're shooting teachers, students, or anybody for any reason or for reasons that we don't even know. But I want to continue talking about, we talked about cyberbullying. We talked about just bullying in general on the playgrounds and in the school building. And we talked about uh, bullying when it has become even known as harassment. And we talked about the effects of bullying and the suicide rate from bullying and how teens are bullied and children are bullied and they're being victimized on a daily basis. And I want to continue on that same vein. And I want to tell you some of the research information that I have gathered. And the first thing I want to share with you on today is that the, that the research reported that students who were cyber victimized were less likely to report and to seek help than those victimized by more traditional means. Now, what that is saying to me and, and to you is that if your child is bullied, they won't share it with you. They'll come home, their attitudes will change, their demeanor will change, but they won't share with you that little Johnny at the school is bullying them, that they're picking on them, that they're taking their lunch, or they won't tell you that they're bullying little Johnny. So there's a lot of secrecy going on in this situation, but it has to be an open line of communication with our children where they can feel that they can come home and they can share that with you. When they get in the car in the evening, when you pick them up, they need to start talking and we need to start talking with them where they feel comfortable enough to communicate. Now, can you imagine that 59% of the United States teens have been bullied or harassed online? These teens mostly think teachers, social media, uh, companies, and politicians, they, they, this is how they feel. They feel that they're being failed and no one is addressing these issues that they're going, that they're going through. They have to attend funerals of their friends who have committed suicide because they were bullied. Yeah, let that soak in for a minute. You know, we, we, we cry out about the children, but are we really understanding what's happening when a child is laid out, stretched out in a short casket? Let me paint the picture. In a short white casket. Flowers all over the church of the funeral home. Because... They felt that there was no other alternative but to take their life, to escape being harassed in an environment where it should have been safe, in an environment where we say you must go to school to get an education. But you can't, but the child can't get a proper education because of harassment and bullying and being victimized. It's time that we speak up and we must cry loud and spare not. Because the facts remain that, that name calling and rumor spreading have been around and been challenging for and is during our adolescent life. It's always been there. But the proliferation of smartphones and the fact that social media has transformed where, when, and how bullying takes place. In the 59% of the United States teens, they say that they have been Personal, they have personally experienced at least one of six various types of abusive online behavior. Now, who monitors this social media? Is it Mr. Zuckerberg? Exactly who's monitoring the social media? Well, parents, hey, it's our responsibility. In a world where you don't have to change the clocks, when daylight saving time began or end, in a world where your car is ran by a computer system that don't need resetting after replacing a battery, 
I find it hard to believe that no one, no one is watching or monitoring our social media that our children are on daily. So then it becomes the parent's responsibility to monitor, to watch. Rather than letting social media become a babysitter, find out what's going on. Find out what's going on on the tablet. Find out what's going on in the gaming world. Because I don't know anything about it because I don't play games. But I do know that in reports, that in, in data that I've looked at, it suggests that even when the child is playing games, they can be cyber bullied. So at all times, we need to monitor what our children are watching. Even on YouTube. Be informed, parents. Now, Google tracks every item and I searched online and the pop-up starts. Tell me who is watching the children. If I'm shopping, now this is an example. If I am shopping for shoes, then the same shoe that I didn't order keeps popping up in my pop-up blocker. But who's watching the children? They're watching me and what I'm shopping online for. So who's watching the children? It's just something to think about. So with name calling being the most common type of bullying and harassment, 42% of teens say they have been called offensive names online or via their cell phone. 32% say that false rumors, in other words, lies and, 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 and humiliating information have been spread about them on the internet. And forbid that there is a picture of some magnitude that gets out there. You know, one of those explicit pictures, the ones our kids like to send out. No clothes, no tops, no bottoms. Imagine one of those get out and it's out there forever. And the child becomes embarrassed because everybody is sharing and everybody is laughing. 16% have been targeted with physical threats online. Physical threats. Let me admonish everyone. Do not send explicit pictures to anyone. Trust no one. While 57% of, of parents worry that their teens are sharing new pictures of themselves that may be used against their child on social media, that within itself is a problem. Please be aware that this practice of posting naked pictures is dangerous. It is very dangerous. We find that boys as well as girls have been bullied and harassed online. Know that girls are more likely to be targets online with rumor spreading uh, or non-consensual explicit messages. As I studied further in this matter, I found that the research indicates that social economics play a role in this. Teens from lower income families are more likely than those from higher income families to encounter certain forms of online bullying. An example, 24% of teens who, whose households become, whose household income rather is less than $30,000 a year say that they have been targeted with physical threats online compared with the 12% whose annual income is higher than 45, 75K or more. You see the socioeconomics differences there? Another factor for teens being subjected depends on how often they're online. Oh yeah. How often the teen goes into their room, closes their door, gets online, and the parent don't have a clue. Now, 45% of the teens said that they're online constantly. Now, it may just be on the telephone. You know how the thumbs be working? That. Or 67% of the teens are online constantly have been cyber bullied. Well, why so? Now, this is just me. I would think that if you're online constantly, then you become more of a target because you're 
as they say, clapping back at certain things. You're, you, you know, you're putting your opinion out there because we're such opinionated people and we all have one. But sometimes we have to govern how we put our opinions out there. And our children, our teenagers need to be taught these things. You know, you social media wisely. Now, compared to 53% who only use the internet several times a day or less, seem to have less of a problem with cyberbullying because they're not there constantly. They're not there out there just putting it out there. It is so very important that parents teach their children and provide them with appropriate advice to make good online decisions. While doing my research, the word bystander kept coming up. And I found that there is something called bystander effect. This is a social a psychological phenomenon in which individuals are less likely to offer help to a victim when others are present. The greater the number of bystanders, the less likely it is that one of them will even help. The bystander effect. You see it happening, but do you do anything about it? Do you share? Do you tell? Do you video record that? Hmm. Several factors contribute to the bystander effect, including ambiguity, group cohesiveness, and diffusion of responsibility that reinforces mutual denial of the severity of the situation. In other words, ain't my fight. I'm so sorry for that interruption, but let's just keep going talking about this bystander effect. Now, we said that this was a social psychological phenomenon. That means that these people are just standing by watching. They have no intention of helping. They have no intention of trying to do anything. And in order, this which can have a significant impact on vulnerable students' uh, risk of victimization. Facebook can be the breeding ground for cyberbullying, as well as game playing online, as I told you earlier, in the gaming network, in the gaming world. But I also want to say, that although the research said that Facebook can be the breeding ground, I want you parents to be aware that there's this new thing out and out, and maybe not new to you, just new to me. It's called Snapchat. came out a couple of years ago, and uh, I, I don't know if many Teens are still utilizing Facebook. I was told they were leaving that for us old people, and they had moved on to Snapchat. So please be aware that there is another avenue other than the things that we are familiar with, which is Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. They moved on to some few more things, and later on, I'm going to look those up and find out exactly what they are, and I'm going to get me some teenage help to bring that information to you. Now, whereas the long-lasting Im impacts on cyberbullying are impossible and difficult to ignore, suicide rate increases due to cyberbullying. Bullying-related suicides can be connected to any type of bullying, including physical bullying, emotional bullying, cyberbullying, sexting, or circuit, and I didn't say texting, now I said sexting. S-E-X-T-I-N-G, or circulating suggestive or nude photos or messages about another person. Suicide is the third leading cause of death among teens. And yes, I keep coming back to, to, to suicide. Yes, I hope you think it's morbid. I hope you think all of that so that you will pay attention to the teenagers so that we won't have these percentages that the rate of suicide Teenage suicide will drop instead of increasing. I want you to be informed. I want to put it in your face. I want you to hear me when I say suicide is the third leading cause of death among teenagers, which results in about 4,400, hear me good, 4,400 deaths per year, according to the CDC. Now, for every suicide, there is at least 100 suicide attempts. That means that there was 100 children that tried to commit suicide because of cyberbullying. The ages between 10 and 14-year-old girls may be at even a higher risk for suicide 
according to this study. Remember this number, 1-800-273-TALK, 800-273-8255. Now, that's the suicide hotline. Now, the reason for suicide and attempts of suicide is pain. Pain, P-A-I-N. No way out, pain. Ibuprofen won't help, pain. And they feel they have no other way of doing it. These attempts are moves for attention or drama just to prove or to make a point, some say. But however, it is real. It's very real. Let's help them and keep them from dying by helping them to stop hurting. Let's address the problems. We must take steps to stop the deaths. We must take steps to stop the bullying. And we can watch for distress in our children. We can talk with and to our children who don't seem to be in distress. Talk to all of them. We can work with our school systems to get to the bystanders, to get them to understand, don't just be a watcher. Come on, let's be a doers. The ones that cheer it on, the ones that like the text messages or repost the nasty messages or the new pictures. These bystanders, we can set, we can give them examples for our children. But first of all, we've got to do better. In the book of Micah 6 and 8, he, uh, God tell, he, he has told you, and this is God that's talking, Oh man, what is good? What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? The bully enjoys causing others pain and anguish. The bully cares nothing about love. He cares nothing about kindness, peace, or gentleness. He festers on hostility, which puts them in a sinful place. And the bully needs to repent of his sinful nature or he will meet an even bigger bully in the pits of hell. If he can't, if he don't ask God to cleanse his heart and to create within him a clean heart and to give him righteousness, then he's going to meet up with a really, really rough bully. There's a story, there's a few stories in the Bible, and I want to share them with you briefly, about some bullies. Pharaoh is a perfect example of what a bully looks like. In the, in the book of Exodus chapter 1, it shows many things that Pharaoh and his men did to Israel, including dealing shrewdly with them, keeping them slaves and afflicting them with heavy burdens. And he made them build uh, store sites and made their lives bitter and with hard services and calling them the midwives to kill all the newborn boys. And the midwives did not obey Pharaoh. But Pharaoh oppressed them because of his power. He was power tripping. And so a lot of times when when when, when you get a bully and they and they they, they think they in all power, they just tend to to, to to bully people and they get off on these high high horses and they then they tripping. But he did not want to lose his dominant status. And we're talking about the bully Pharaoh. Of course, we know that God did deliver the Israelites from the land of Pharaoh and set them free. But this is not the case always on earth. But be, but be rest assured, as God says, vengeance is mine and recompense for the time when their foot shall slip. For the day of their calamity is at hand and their doom comes quickly. And in the end, God will make all things right. And we have to remember that. But that was another one. That was in the Old Testament. So a lot of folks don't want to hear that. But let me talk about bullies in the New Testament for a minute. Over in Matthews, as you know it, St. Matthews, chapter 14, verses 6 through 7, there was a, 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 a woman, and her name was Heroditus, and she was the wife of King Herod. 
and she had used her own daughter to accomplish her wicked agenda with John the Baptist. What, John the Baptist was very well known in the land and he prepared the way for Jesus and we know the story of John the Baptist. But And John the Baptist also, he baptized many people, but he was a threat to, Her Her to Heroditus in her mind now in her mind so when king herod, herod gave an oath to give his daughter anything she wanted heroditus prompted her to ask for the head of john the baptist this way in her mind she would maintain power through her husband as king now this is a form of bullying at its extreme form so i need you to know that the bully's heart seeks power, but the Christian heart seeks to serve God. The bully's heart wants dominance, but the Christian heart wants to obey God. The bully's heart plans wicked schemes, but the Christian heart plans acts of kindness. Whereas the bully's heart acts out in rage, the Christian heart acts out in love. The bully's heart enjoys inflicting pain on others, but the Christian heart enjoys helping others. The bully's heart hates love and justice, but the Christian heart hates injustice. The bully's heart loves hatred and injustice, and the Christian heart loves justice. The bully's heart relies on others to back him up. But the Christian heart needs no one but God ultimately. The bully's heart is motivated by self-dominance, whereas the Christian heart is motivated to encourage and to lift others up. I want each and every one of you that's listening to this broadcast on today, about saving our children to know that we have to have a Christian heart, even toward the bully. We have to love them and we have to nurture them, whereas they won't become grown bullies. If we can get them in pre k then we can do something with them and teach them that this is not the way to go. I want you to always be informed Thank you so very much to, for listening to Hiding Behind the Lipstick 3.0 Ministries. And until next time, please watch the children. It is vitally important that we are saving our children. Until next time, be blessed. God love you, and so do I. And do not continue to be a bystander hiding behind the lipstick.